this is Drew Zolo, bass player for Black Bass Choir, and you're listening to Sugar 16 Magazine, the only magazine that rocks. Are you ready to uh, chat? First of all, I just wanted to uh, thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. Yeah, uh, uh, thanks for, you know, having us in your magazine. It's awesome. Now, first of all, I did read the band bio, so I did want to express my condolences on the loss of your mother, because um, that certainly has played a part in, in in the band and the music. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it's it's such a powerful emotion, grief, and it's so personal, but, you know, a lot of people say great art comes out of those feelings, so tell us kind of how you came down the path towards the formation of this band. Well, um, yeah, well, Wolf and the lead singer Wolf, uh, Will Wolf, we've been in um, three, we've been in two other band, two other bands together over the years. Okay. So we've both been. I was on the my records for a while, and we're all, we're kind of like veterans in the in the business, you know. Sure. So, yeah, um, and so basically, you know, I I, I put. My brother is the guitar player too, and he's my older brother. We've been playing together for 32 years, so it's kind of like a family of musicians that you know, know like people that I know that I've worked with in, in the past. Sure. And um, you know, everyone's excellent at what they do, and you know, we just you know just haven't you know gotten the right you know breaks as far as you know get an album released and get it global, you know. Sure. And, um, you know, I was, like I said, I was on EMI Records for three and a half years. I got, I was signed by Ron Fair, who, um, he was head of Arista Records for a while, and I was under Clive Davis' son, Fred Davis. So we've all had kind of like pretty decent kind of careers, but nothing like over over the top. So um, we all just kind of keep going at it. And, and, you know, I play a lot of blues and R&B, and we have blues bands on the side. And, you know, um, you know, I play jazz and all that kind of music. So nice. everyone, yeah, everyone's a pretty well-rounded musician, you know, and um, we, we all get hired for, you know, for gigs, doing subs, you know, sub gigs for, you know, either blues or, you know, not really cover bands, but mostly like blues or jazz or, you know, that type of music. Okay, cool. So you're all working outside of Black Mass Choir. Yeah, so it's like uh, everybody's working, you know, my, my brother's got his thing, I got my thing, and then we all have Black, I have Black Mass Choir, which I got all these guys in, and but we also have, a, we have the Dirty Delta Trio, which is a, um, a blues band on the side where we make money, you know? Okay, nice. And, and so, this thing was, um, you know, I was with my brother for, we've been playing together for 32 years, and he's my older brother, he's a guitar player, I'm a bass player, so majority of the time he's always writing the music and so um you know when my mom passed i was like my mom was an artist and um my dad was a sax player my sister's a ballerina my brother's a guitar player okay wow and so i just um i said fuck it i'm just gonna go in the studio and just like pour it all out so i, I did for like a year and uh, with this producer friend of mine who owns the studio and portrayed her and um, he, me and him just started putting music together and I was, and I would, you know, listen, have my brother listen to it and and he was like, hey, it's pretty good and, you know, it's really kind of my first writing effort by my, all by myself without any help from, you know, my, my brother or anybody. Okay. So, um, then I just, I called it in Wolf and it was like, hey man, I, I got some music, you know, I can't pay you much, but, you know, let's see what you, and he loved it. And so we've been uh, recording and getting it all together since. Nice. And we all, all yeah, we all been like playing together, uh, like I said, in, in, in the blues bands on the Dirty Dogs trio on the side, you know. And, uh, you know, Wolf's got another band, but 
uh, this year we're really going to get this one together. And um, I've I've written over you know probably about thirty songs, and I have um, probably about sixteen that are kind of to kind of match this Black Mass Choir vein. Okay. And and um, eight are done, but I'm a, a well, 16 are done, but um, I'm only putting out six of them and seeing how it goes. And then another, you know, if that goes well, I'll throw out a couple more. You know, I'm going to make a, I'm going to do a video, this a couple videos this year and get the package in the, the um, social media all up and, you know, in the numbers and whatnot. Sure. Well, it's a start. It's a start. Six songs, and and they're six really great songs so far. So, um, well, I'll be looking forward to seeing what comes, you know, down the road from you guys. Tell me a little bit about the name of the band, because one of the songs is also Black Mass Choir. Um, did the song come first? Then you just thought that would be a good name for the band, or is there some significance to the name? Um, well, uh, I'm from Massachusetts originally. Okay. And uh, you know. Wolf actually came up with the name, and you know there was a there was a movie called Black Mass out um, that was about Whitey Bulger, and um, Wolf liked the mass, liked the band, liked the name Black Mass Choir. So I was like, okay, that's cool. Let's, because he couldn't just, the the lyrics he was writing were kind of dark and and um, so it kind of fit. And then I said to Wolf, I said, well, why don't you write a song called Black Mass Choir? And, yeah, uh, why not? Yeah, and I said, we've never really, I've never really been in a band where we've had the, like the, the you know, a title track or, or, or song, a bit song named after the band. So he started singing on the phone, over the phone, Black Mass Choir. <laughs> and I already, I already wrote the music to it. And so uh, it just fell into place. So is that how that whole kind of just like almost spoken, shouted, Black Mass Choir vocal is in the song? Is that because yeah. of the phone call? <laughs> yeah. That's cool. And so, yeah. And um, I have a, a longtime family friend. Um, his name's Mark DeSisto. And he's got a um, Grammy with Don Henley. He's a, he's a producer up in L.A. And he's the one that mixed and mastered it for us. And... Uh, I kind of he. My grandfather was his family doctor. Okay, so way back. So, yeah, from way back, and so you know, we're kind of like family. So he um he he's worked with me and my brother over the years, and this one he really enjoyed doing. So I I got him to mix and master it. So that sounds really good, you know. I, We've always put out good quality sounding music anyway. Well, I just, I had to ask about the name because that's what kind of first drew me in to check you guys out because we get all these bands coming through and thousands of listings and um, rock and metal. I, I try to branch out a lot and I love all kinds, but that's where my really heart is. So I, when I saw this, okay, I got to listen to this one because it sounds like it could be cool. So, and it was, so. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it was like no particular. I thought, you know, when he came up with Black Mass Choir, um, I thought it was kind of cool because I'm in from Massachusetts and there was a movie out named Black Mass and I am Italian and the whole Whitey Bulger thing in, in New England and, you know, back east and stuff. It was. It's kind of cool, so. Yeah, and I, I just, when I clicked on it, and the first song that I heard was Slave. So mm -hmm. get a little specific, if you could, with that one, because that one just, that's a killer one. That'll just bring you right in and make you want to listen to everything else that's on the EP. Yeah, Slave, um, the, the, the whole, the whole, um, the whole, theme of the it is it's not it's it's not like we're saying you know talking about the devil and it's it's about it's it, you gotta leave it it's open to interpretation right you, you believe whatever you want to believe and uh slave will never be is you know basically slave to the grind you know and it's it's awesome i just love like the energy 
of that song because I can just picture you guys like hitting the stage at a massive festival or something and coming out with that resurrect me and just everybody would be like oh my god who are these guys let's run over there and check that out yeah and actually we wrote that on Easter Sunday we went in <laughs> I, I wrote the riff I wrote the riff at, the, at my house I, <clears throat> and have this futon that I write all my riffs so I call it the magic futon <laughs> and I went in the studio and recorded this and Wolf busted out the lyrics in one day on uh, Easter and I was like oh, ooh you know and the whole thing was inspired by Easter too so very cool very cool story with that one um yeah. as you're going through the songs you know they all they all kind of go together but they all have some different unique sounds to them um you know it's not just repeat you know lather rinse repeat type thing which a lot of bands kind of get into that and it makes sense that you said you know you've got this blues thing going on on the side and you're drawing from that so who would you say are some of the biggest influences on the sound for this particular record um actually i was it, it would be Rammstein. okay yeah, um, I love them. I love the band. I love the the, the simplicity of it. Um, I did, wasn't gonna like this. These tracks weren't supposed to be like you know uh, intro verse, cor chorus, bridge, you know, or pre-chorus. It wasn't supposed to be all that. It was take like th one or two really cool grooves and two or three parts of making songs out, you know, more like, you know, Rob Zombie, like John Five and Rob Zombie would do, mm -hmm. or, or, uh, Marilyn Manson would kind of be doing, you know, that, that just not, not like, um, you know, and Romstein does that, you know, they just take two simple grooves and they can create a whole song out of it, you know, just a couple parts. Sure. And, and I just wanted it, I wanted it to dumb it down and just feel the beat and the groove in the, in the pulse of the whole thing. And try, I mean, we can write songs like, you know, verse, chorus, pre-chorus, you know, chorus, bridge, you know, all that kind of stuff. But it, it wasn't really, wasn't really about that. It was more of a, it was more of kind of a, um, like just a groove, just a really cool groove. Yeah, yeah, it works too. It works because that's the the main thing that you take away from it is is the groove of the songs. It's not necessarily, you know, a whole. Everybody does one thing. You don't want to do that, and this is just it's a little different from most things that are out there right now. And I really liked it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just uh, you know it's and that's how I usually you know I go in the studio and I come I come up there with some parts and you know one thing I really like and we'll figure out a drum beat with it and then we'll lay that down and then I'll come up with another part and see how that works and you know we just kind of tag it along that and that's just kind of like it works it's just been working and and I just want to and I, I I picture you know. My friend has this really bitching car stereo, and you know the first time I heard uh, the Cult Sonic Temple in there. Okay. And uh, just the, you know the the sound and the just the the pulse and the beat of the of how it sounds in the car, you know, and that really killer stereo just was like. So every time I write, I try to think of you know how how's it gonna sound really loud and in your face, you know, in a in a concert, you know, through the, all the fills and you know, how's it gonna hit you, and I, I I like kind of mold off that. Okay, and it hit really hard because um, my little Bose speaker, one of them, uh, vibrated right off the edge of my desk. <laughs> so it works. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, uh, it, it, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know you guys are kind of just getting everything rolling this year. Like you said, maybe some videos coming up and hitting social media hard. Any live gigs, or are you guys kind of a little bit early for that right now? Um, well, yeah, we're, we're just getting the band going right now. And um, but we're not going to do, you know, we're not going to beat the streets. We're going to just play some, you know, decent-sized gigs, you know, um, 
maybe one every you know three months or something like that. Okay. You know, to make it to make it special, you know everybody. It um, that way, you know, I've been in bands where we play three, four times a month, and you know people are like, oh, we'll catch you on the next one. And we know you're playing the next time. Right. So we're we're just kind of. Um, I'm just gonna hit. You know, I'm hitting for festivals, and um, I have some booking agents that hook us up with some national acts. So we're we're just gonna hit some good shows and and keep it more of a you know special right. special events. I, I get that. So when Black Mass Choir is playing, it's gonna be an, an event, not an every week thing at your local club, and so people are gonna want to come and check it out. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, you know, we're here in San Diego, and we're pretty, we're, um, we're the upper tier of, as far as local musicians around here. So people, people do, you know, we've been in here, I've been in, we all been in, lived in L.A. for a while, and we all kind of just re- relocated to San Diego in the past 20 years, but uh, people know who we are, and people respect us, so they, they come out to see our, you know, our blues show, um, but they're more excited to come out and see the, you know, Black Mass Choir and the rock thing because, um, so I, I think we'll draw, we'll draw pretty good, you know, and and uh, keep it exciting and keep it special. Absolutely, it sounds great. I hope sometime in the future you'll be able to get uh, beyond the San Diego area with the gigs, and we'll have a chance to check you out locally here somewhere in North Carolina. Yeah, that'd be great. It's, that's the plan. You know, when we're just going to keep writing and recording and we're not going to quit. So it's, uh, like I said, me and my brother have been at it for 32 years and me and the lead singer Wolf, we've been, we've been at it for the past 10 years, you know, hit and miss with different bands. And so we're, we're, we're all like family. We have, uh, we have Thanksgiving together and stuff like that. Oh, nice. Yeah. And, you know, all these days... <laughs> Maybe it'll be this year. We'll do really well. I hope so. I hope so. I, I hope people give this a chance because it's um it's really one of the best things I've heard in a long time. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Oh, you're welcome.